I said to you, keep it brief. <laughs> it's a great, great pleasure to be with you tonight, all my good friends. Uh, and I appreciate so much this recognition, Dr. Stone. I need to introduce my uh, special guest, my wife, Karen, uh, my sister, Aileen, uh, my administrative assistant, Sheila, my brother, Jim, his son, Ed, and my introducer, <laughs> Brent and Catherine. Uh, Brent, I appreciate the introduction, but I told you to keep it brief. <laughs> uh, actually, Brent and I had a very similar career. We both started at Broad Hill at the bottom and worked our way up, and we both ended up as presidents. So I guess that makes us about equal. I guess I had a little advantage being the son of the boss, but other than that, <laughs> I always kid him. I guess we're the only two that were that started with nothing and started at nothing and uh, ended up uh, as president. Anyhow, we're real proud of him coming uh, from a history teacher at Gamewell, so I guess the school system ought to be reasonably proud of him as we are. <laughs> You know, I, 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 I was in the school system of uh, Lenore during the 30s. I'm sure you've had other people make this speech. Uh, you're not going to have too many more in the future. <laughs> I started, I actually started in school in, in uh, September 1930, and I finished uh, 11 grades in 40, 41. So I spent those 10 years of the 30s, which are very, very tough times, which most of you, of course, don't remember, but you've heard of. There was 25, at times, 30% unemployment, and and it was tough, tough. But on the other hand, um, you know, 70% of the people had jobs, and when we went to school, uh, I look back, it seems to be we had, a, uh, we had normal lives, and most people that we were going to school with, I guess their parents had, had jobs, Unfortunately, I'm, I'm sorry to say, probably the real hardcore unemployed, their children, Lord knows where they were, but there were, there were a lot of people starving those days. But at any rate, we had a fairly normal life in the school system. I remember the teachers in the first six grades, the grades, as he said, were 11 grades, and, and there were two schools, East Harbor School and, and Lenore High School. And, and, and at least those sixth grades, one teacher would teach all the subjects. I'm not sure we do that anymore, but we had, you know, a teacher for each grade. I remember quite a number of those teachers. The teachers were all good. I don't remember any particular disciplinary problems or a usual amount of cutting up a little bit if the teacher's out of the room. I remember throwing um, uh, erasers. Uh, you yeah. got to do a spitball with a rubber band. I don't know whether you know what that is or not. Do a little something in your mouth and go bing and hit the girl in the back of the head and she yell. <laughs> that was about as mean as we were in those days. I, I went on. I, I do need to mention that we had a, a very elaborate seventh grade uh, graduation. That was the big, that was the end of grammar school and the beginning of high school. And I think the reason for that is that. Many people didn't go beyond the seventh grade. Uh, certainly in previous years that was the case, and even in those days that was the case. So going to high school was still a privilege in those days. Uh, in high school, of course, the biggest memory I had had to do with the band. I'm sure many of you uh, remember that or have heard of that. The band, band sort of permeated uh, Lenore High School, largely because of Captain Harper's influence as, as, as he mentioned, I, were, I, I practiced three hours a day, had band practice one, one or two hours in the evening, uh, once or twice a week. And then we had band marching drill an hour before school, once or twice a week during football season. So the band really took up a, a lot of our time and attention. I, I'm sure I, I look back on it and think, I guess I was learning music, and I certainly was interested in music. But I think about what what did that do for me? I think it learned that I learned I had to learn concentration, which you really have to concentrate. I had to learn dedication and discipline. I, I think about that often. That 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 band practice probably 
did me more good than, than I realized from the standpoint of just teaching me how to concentrate and work hard. And of course, I think that carried on through into my subsequent education. I went on to prep school, went on to Chapel Hill, and uh, went to the service and came back to Chapel Hill. Uh, I actually finished college in, in uh, back in those days were in the quarter system. Uh, normally it would take 12 quarters. I finished college in 11 quarters because I was in a hurry. Back in those days, we came back from the service and we were all in a hurry to get to work. <clears throat> uh, I don't understand today why it takes kids five years to get out of school. <laughs> uh, I think if you want to work hard, you can, you can, you can get it done. Uh, I, I went to work at Broyhill. Uh, back in those days, uh, we didn't have a big organization. The organization had been depleted uh, during the war, um, and we were beginning to rebuild so that I was able to, at a very young age, jump in and do things that perhaps uh, in another time or another era, uh, a young man coming into a, a company of that size wouldn't be able to, you know, get around the existing organization. But as I say, there weren't that many people there, so I just had to grab a hold and start doing jobs. And, and my dad never really gave me a job. He didn't tell me to do. He told me not to do a lot of things, I can tell you that. But, uh, <laughs> at any rate, I'd, I'd just grab a hold and go ahead and do. Uh, as, as opposed to Brad, Brad had an interview, was appointed president. I, I never was appointed president. I, we, we didn't use titles much. I, I don't believe I ever had a business card for many, many years. And I just signed my name general manager for many years. And uh, this is an interesting story. Uh, I wanted to join an organization called Young Presidents. You had to join before you were 40. And I got to be 39 and some of my friends pushing on me to join. So I went to Ed Beach and said, well, just change some of the minutes. And one of, we had a, quite a number of corporations. I just, just made me president of one of the corporations, which he did. And so I joined the Young Presidents. <laughs> and, uh, and, and the next year when my dad looked over the minutes, he, he sort of grunted when he saw that. And since he didn't... Say, say too much, I told that, I said, Ed, just change all the rest of them, make me president of the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I got to be president. <laughs> but I look back on those days, and in the beginning, we, we didn't have many college graduates in our company, uh, certainly almost none in the production end, meaning the factories. Uh, we didn't have a big executive staff, so we, we, we just didn't have a lot of so we, we started off with, uh, you know, a lot of Lenore High School graduates and a lot of, a lot of people in our plants probably um, only went, uh, finished a, a few grades of school. Uh, but we had a lot of wonderful, wonderful people, and we were able to build a, a business with these people. People don't realize it, but as we got going and started developing, uh, business becomes a training organization. We did a tremendous amount of training. and. If people have a good attitude and they want to learn, uh, you know, we were teaching, we were teaching all the time. So we had good people, and we would give them what we call on-the-job training, and uh, we got the job done. Uh, so again, Lenore High School got me through college all right. It got me uh, through my business all right. Uh, <clears throat> Let, let me let me just say something before I quit. Uh, I was going to be briefer than Brent, so <laughs> this is going to be shocking to you. I said that a lot of people didn't go beyond the seventh grade back in those days. He didn't want me to say this, but uh, approximately a third of the people that start in school today do not graduate from high school. Isn't that shocking? I don't know whether you know that or not. But then of the people that um, graduate from high school, probably about 60% go to college. Uh, now, of those 60% that start in college, just a little over half of those finish. Now, now just look, look at the dropout as you go along from one to the other, the other, the other. Now, this is really going to shock you. It'll shock him. He doesn't know this. How many people, how many people, uh, 
in, in the state of North Carolina, I have a college degree. In America, I just happened to look up that figure, so I'm so smart tonight. <laughs> in America, this is shocking to me, 27.5% of the people in America have a college degree. In North Carolina, 25% of, of the people have a college degree. Shockingly, in Caldwell County, a little less than 15% have a college degree. And can you imagine that? None of us would have imagined that. We think we're training all these people We've been working since World War II, 60 years, spending all this money, putting forth all this effort, trying to teach all these people to go to college, and they've been telling them they have to go to college to get a decent job. And in Caldwell County, uh, only 15% have a college degree. I'm not doing that, saying that to criticize uh, the school system or criticize college. I think community college is the best thing we've ever done uh, as far as colleges are concerned and they're doing a wonderful job. <clears throat> but I'm just trying to say that the school system has to prepare that 60 or 70 percent of people. It has to prepare them for their future. It has to prepare them for a job. And I think we have a great school system here in Caldwell. I'm proud of them. I've, I've had numerous occasions to, to be, be with them. And and and, uh, and and I appreciate them so much. Uh, as I re reflect back on my career, I just want to say that I think a, a lot of what I was able to accomplish uh, is as a result of, uh, of of the foundation that I received. Number one, family, of course, the school, uh, my uh, my community, and uh, my my business association, business associates and friends. With that, I'll conclude, and I thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Mr. Broadhill. And also, I'm glad you said that about the erasers. I don't feel so bad now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so if you could get away with it, I feel good that I could. <laughs> the name of Paul.